Just lift up a hand before the Lord. Let's pray about the word. Father, we agree together as touching this, asking you for utterance, for the anointing, for ears that can hear, eyes and a mind and heart that can receive and perceive and understand and lay hold of, answers to questions, direction and help for right now, a supply and an increase of your revelation and your anointing and a revelation of the next parts of the plan. We ask for these things. In Jesus' name, and we purpose not to be hearers only, but to be doers. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Somebody say, I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer, I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the Word of God. Look with me, if you would, at uh, two openings. First Peter, the first chapter. Then also 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. We're continuing on a subject we've been on for some weeks now. And I'm calling it right now, I've called it more than one thing, but I'm calling it right now the incorruptible seed. The incorruptible seed. And... Uh, some things that Phyllis referred to in some of the testimonies like a Mercy Over Judgment series and the Healing series and a number of other things, those are available uh, at no charge. And um, if you need some of these things, that's what we're talking about now. Get that word, that seed in you. It will produce the results you need. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And don't assume you know things. And it's not just about knowledge. If a message really ministers to you, listen to it again Amen. and again Amen. and again because yes, there's something uh, in particular that the Lord was quickening you about in that word. In uh, 1 Peter, 1st chapter, 23rd verse, 1 Peter 1, 23 says, we're being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God which lives and abides forever. Next two verses. For all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man is as the flower of grass. The grass withers, the flower thereof falls away. Now let's, let's stop here. Our body is born of a corruptible seed. Corruptible means it can decay. And so our body is just like a blade of grass or a flower. It, it comes from a seed and then it develops into maturity. It reaches its peak and then like a flower or a, pea, or a blade of grass or a tree or a plant, it starts aging and decaying and has a limited life cycle. The maximum life expectancy that the Lord has given us is in Genesis 6-3, about 120 years. Now, if you think, well, that's way too long. No, there are a few people living that long. Yes, they are. If you look it up, I mean, there are people alive today that's 112, 113. There's been some recently, one was, one was 117. It's possible. Most people don't make it that long. But if you made it to 100, that's better than most people. But you know, it's not just about existing on the earth that long. I mean, I don't want to stay that long unless I'm accomplishing something. Amen. Hmm? But uh, with the Lord, a thousand years is like a day. So a hundred year life to him would be like a couple of hours if you do the math. So if you've been alive 50 years and you're going to make it to 100, you got like an hour left. God time. And that's not, that's not just a skewed way of seeing it. That's the right way of seeing it. We're the ones that think 50 years is a long time because it's all we've ever experienced. But God, who's been around for untold billions of years, he's experiencing time correctly. And that's what the Bible says about him. So 
corruptible seed, but your spirit, if you're born again, Amen. is born of an incorruptible, eternal seed, which means you will never age internally. You'll, you should develop, but you don't grow old, ever. Your mind is not your brain. Your brain is the physical organ your mind functions through. But your mind's a part of your spirit being, your inner man. Sometimes people think, well, you know, I'm getting old and my brain's getting old. And I can't remember everything and, and I, guess I'm, I guess I'm just getting old. Hush. Amen. <laughs> That's, that's like shooting yourself in the foot, man. <laughs> Why would you do that? We tell our little ones. We want to get it in them while they're little. I'm, to say this out loud, they, they know it. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm bright. I'm good looking. Amen. And very rich. Amen. And a major blessing. Our little ones at church learn this. I see people nodding their head. You've heard them say it. What'd be wrong with the older one saying it? I'm quick. I am quick. I'm bright. I'm bright. I'm sharp. I'm sharp. Good, looking. Good looking. Very rich. Very rich. And, a and a major blessing. That's me. Right? Is that you? <laughs> if you look up Deuteronomy 28 and Galatians 3. You'll see we've been redeemed from the curse of the law because Jesus became a curse in our place. He redeemed us specifically from the curse of the law. Well, we ought to know what the curse of the law is to know what we've been redeemed from because if you've been redeemed from it, you don't want to have, to have it. And one of the things that's in the curse of the law is losing your mind. Have you read it? Being distracted, crazed in the wits, losing your mind. And quit singing songs that talk about losing your mind. Have you ever noticed how many secular songs talk about losing my mind, going insane? I mean, it's in songs all over the place. And it's foolish to sing such things. Don't let it come out of your mouth. Even if you're tapping your foot to a good bass line, just don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> I've been saying this for years, and I recommend it to you. I will never lose my mind. I will never lose my mind. I had an aunt who, when she was 103, could recite the entire family tree from memory. Names, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, cousins, a lot of dates, places of birth. Well, I mean, a mate, 103. You don't have to get fuzzy just because you get gray. That'd be a good message, wouldn't it? You don't have to get fuzzy mentally just because your hair gets gray. Amen. Don't, don't accept it. Don't buy into it. You might say, well, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to be, but you, you just never know. Well, then you're subject to dementia. I've been redeemed. It matters what you believe. People say, well, I, I hope. I hope that don't happen, but you just never know. Listen to the 91st Psalm. No plague will come nigh my dwelling. It may happen to a thousand on this side, 10,000 on the other, but it won't happen to me. I'm quoting scripture. Psalm 91. But see, most people are not bold enough to talk like that because they don't believe it. And if you don't believe it, it's not going to work for you. Because these signs follow them that believe. believe, not those that don't believe. So the fear, actually the fear of a thing draws it to you. 
pulls it on you. If you're afraid that's happening, it pulls it to you Amen. like a magnet. Come on, somebody say it out loud. And don't be moved by any symptoms you've had. Even if your brain needs a touch, we know the one who's Amen. got the touch. Amen. Don't we? Amen. Don't we? Amen. Say it out loud. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. By, the blood of the Lamb. by the blood of the Lamb. I will never, I will never lose, my mind. lose my mind. I have, I have the, mind the mind of Christ. Is that scripture? Yes. I have the mind of Christ. I'm going to be quick and bright and sharp all my life. And then I'm going to leave here. When God and I get good and ready for me to go. Not before. Not until. It'll come soon enough. Well, somebody needed that. And it didn't hurt the rest of you. <laughs> don't believe lies. And don't be moved by anything. You know, I've, I've seen people say, you know, I, I just, I forgot that. And, and I said that wrong. And, and there must be something going on. I've heard 20-year-olds do the same thing. Amen. They just didn't think anything about it. The enemy is always trying to get you to accept something. And the way he gets you to accept it is if he can get you to say it. This is happening to me. I have this. I can't do this. My arthritis. If you say so. My bad knee, my weak eye. The scripture, faith calls those things that be not as though they were. Amen. The scripture said, let the weak say, I am what? Let the weak say, I, am I can't get around. No, let the weak say, you need to learn to do what Jesus did. He's our example. There is no better example. He said, if you believe on me, the works I do, you'll do also. And Jesus spoke to things. And they changed. And if something's not doing what it should, you, talk, you say, body, body, you're my body. Listen to me, kidneys, work. Function properly. Listen to me, lungs, clear up in Jesus' name. I'm not talking about me doing that for you. I'm talking about you doing that for yourself. Hmm? Talk to it. Speak to it. And if you need to speak to it again tomorrow, you do. And the next day, you do. Hmm? Speak to your brain. Speak to it. Be perfect. Be normal. If there's been any damage, be restored. Can God do it? Easy, easy, easy for him. But he's got to have some cooperation with us. And it's not about what he can do. It's about what we will receive. What we'll believe, what we'll receive. Thank you, Father. 1 Corinthians 3, are you there? 1 Corinthians 3 and 6. Talking about the incorruptible seed of God's Word that lives and abides forever. The Spirit of God through Paul said, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. What did Paul plant? He came to them and preached the gospel to them and taught them about the gospel. They had never heard it before, so it was planning. Later, Apollos, who we know to be a teacher, he came and taught them, no doubt on some of the same subjects, but he taught them about things they had already heard. And so it watered the seed that God used Paul to plant. But God is the one that makes the seed grow and produces the results, gave the increase. So we need both. We need the planting of the word that, that we've never heard before, but that's not all. Just because you've heard something, the word of God, that's not the end, it's the beginning. And that seed must be watered with some of the same word. 
to keep it active and to cause it to, to develop and continue. Just like a seed germinates, puts roots down, and eventually begins to sprout up, that's exactly how the Word of God works. I'm believing for revelation to dawn on all of us about the miraculous Word seed. Hmm? It's not about knowledge. See, we, people have developed their minds and they're with their education, but they haven't developed their spirit. And so they try to make everything mental, and everything's not mental. God's not mental, God's spirit. And you're a spirit. You have a mind, but you're not a mind. You're a spirit. And, and God's word is spirit. John 6, 63, Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit. And they are truth. And they are living seeds. When the Lord says something to you, he's not just informing you. If you'll receive it, he's implanting something in you that will develop and change you inside and out. Do you believe it, friends? When this, when this dawns on us, we will treat the word differently with much greater respect. We'll desire it much more. And we'll respond to it differently. He said, keep, keep reading. He said, uh, he, neither is he that plants anything or he that waters, but God that gave the increase, gives the increase. Now he that plants and he that waters are one. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. And that's, that's what we do get reward for. The scripture in, in this passage talks about that in the day when all things are judged, a lot of things will be shown to be wood, hay, and stubble. And the fire will consume them and they won't, they won't last, they won't continue, and they won't get any reward for it. There will be a lot of stuff that's a great big pile of stuff, but it's not, it won't last. It's not eternal. When the fire judges it, it goes up in smoke. But everything that's done by the direction of the Lord, by the direction of the Spirit, and with His Word, it lasts forever. It's precious jewels and gold and silver that will only be refined by the fire and will last. He said, for we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. The Amplified says, you are God's garden and vineyard and field under cultivation. Said out loud, I am, I am God's, garden, God's garden, God's vineyard, God's vineyard his field. His field. Well, what do you do with a field? You plant it, right? You plant it. A field is to be planted. And the way God does everything is with his word seeds. The way he does everything. The planet you and I are on, that we live on, the star that's giving us light outside, came into existence because God released word seed. You talk about the power of an atom bomb in a small case. It don't compare to a word God speaks. When God speaks a word, he's not just saying. He never just says. When he speaks, he creates. He changes. He heals. He supplies. He delivers. He restores. If you couldn't do a thing, when God tells you to do it, now you can. Why? Because he told you. His words are not just instructions. They're enablings. 
Oh, come on. Is somebody, somebody with me this morning? When Peter saw Jesus walking across the water, he said, if that's you, tell me to come. Could Peter walk across the water at that moment? No. <laughs> Not any more than you could or me. But what did Jesus say? Come. Can Peter walk on the water now? Yeah, he can. Why? Because this is not just an invitation. This is not just an instruction. This is an empowerment. This is an enablement because this is a living, incorruptible word. See. When you're reading the Bible and the Spirit of God is quickening it to you, it's the same thing. It's incorruptible word seed. When there's teaching and preaching and it's the word and it's anointed, it's word seed. Not, every, not everything that everybody preaches is word seed. <laughs> there's a lot of dud seed. <laughs> but if it's the word and it's anointed, it's living. It's eternal. It's incorruptible. And if you'll receive it, it will do miraculous things in you, in your spirit, in your mind, in your emotions, in your body, in your marriage, in your family, in your finances, in your profession. Hallelujah. Brother uh, Schambach, great tent preacher, used to say, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. <laughs> well, how do you get faith? All you need is a word from God. Right? Because then that word can give you faith. And with that faith, it, that faith overcomes the world. It can overcome any problem. Praise be to God. Go to Luke 8, please. Well, the more I preach this, the more it grows. It seems like at some point we need to get past the introduction. <laughs> but y'all plan on coming back? Or you, you don't have to do everything today. Luke 8, verse 4, is, is some of the most amazing teaching that Jesus gave us about word seed. Word seed. It says, when much people were gathered together, they were come to Jesus out of every city. He spoke a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. As he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Keep reading for the next several verses. Some fell upon a rock, as soon as it sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell among thorns. A thorn sprang up with it and choked it. Other fell on good ground. How many like when you talk about the good ground? Good ground. And sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Keep going. His disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? He said, to you it's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Just because you hear the word doesn't mean you get it. Amen. Jesus said, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Everybody say this out loud. The seed is the word of God. Say it again. The seed is is the Word of God. One more time. The seed is the Word of God. Word seed. Hallelujah. I'm excited about word seed. I don't know if you can tell it or not, but I'm, I'm stirred up about this. The seed is the Word of God. So how does the Word work? Like a seed. Many have not gotten this revelation. I went to minister's 
visit somebody in the hospital one time. This is many years ago. And uh, I started trying to talk to them about going over some word on healing. And they, and they said, oh, you mean the Bible? I said, yeah. They said, you know, I read some of that, you know, years ago. I've read that. So what was their mentality? If you've read it, you've read it. Do they have any concept that the word is seed? No. Got to be planted and then it's got to be watered. Hmm? No concept of that. And many folks are the same way. They say, well, I've been in church for X amount of years. I've been around this. Oh, yeah, I heard that back in the 60s. Yeah, yeah. Well, that don't mean a thing. Did you receive it? Have you watered it? Have you let it grow and develop in you? Because the word is a seed. And it works like seed. And here he's, he's describing four different types of ground that, are, that obviously covers all of humanity and their responses of these different grounds to the seed. And I believe the Lord gave me this phrase at, uh, at the beginning, near the beginning of this series, that all the outcomes of this life and the next are the results of our response to God's Word. I didn't say everything that happened to you. I said it was God, but the outcome of every situation in life will be the result of our response to His Word. God has said something about everything. If, if people say, well, I, yeah, but I, I don't know. The, the devil has convinced millions of people, including church-going people, that the Bible is archaic and you can't really understand it. And so they appreciate it. They respect it. Really, they don't. But they don't see it as their daily food. That's right. They don't see it as miraculous seed that if I'll get it off the page and get it in me, it'll produce a miracle. They don't believe that. They don't see that at all. But Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God has a word for every situation in our life. Hallelujah. Written word or a word quickened by his spirit with further detail, but there's a word. And in that word, like in a seed, is the miraculous power to develop and overpower and overcome whatever difficulty or lack or need there is. 1 Peter 2.24, by, don't, you don't, don't, don't turn there, I'm just saying, by his stripes you were healed. Do you believe there's enough power in that word to heal everybody in the house yes. and everybody in the state yes. and everybody in the world? Do you believe that? Yes. It is. But you got to respect it. You got to treat it like what it is. Some people will have a, maybe a rare plant or a rare seed that they paid big money for. Maybe it's some rare orchid or something. Or a bulb. Oh, they, they take such care of it. And, and then they got to make sure it's in the right place. And then got to get enough sunlight. And then got to get enough water. If you just treated a scripture like that, Amen. you'd get miracles. You'd get miracles. And we will. We do and we will because we respect God around here. We value his word. We esteem his precious word. And we're learning more than ever how to receive it, how to treat it so as to get results. Did you notice that according to Jesus, three out of four people that heard the word got no results Seventy-five percent of the people that heard the word 
got zero results. Nothing. That's not something that we've emphasized enough. Is it because the word seed doesn't always work? No. It's incorruptible seed. Right? right? Amen. It cannot. The, the, the seed, word seed of God cannot fail to come up if it's received. It's not a seed problem. Amen. It's a ground problem. Was it God's will and choice that those other three got no results? Was that his mysterious mystical plan for them? No, no, no. It was their choice how they responded to the word. I believe I'm looking at some prime ground. Huh? Good ground. Oh, that was, that was a place for you to say yes, amen, amen. I, I believe I'm looking at some good, rich, rich black Mississippi Delta soil that can grow anything. <laughs> uh, we got some friends, fellow ministers down in Samoa in the South Pacific. And that volcanic uh, soil down there is so rich that you can take a, 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 a tree, a little, a little tree, cut off the top and the bottom for a post and put it in the ground and it'll, it'll sprout roots <laughs> and begin to grow into a tree again. Now that's good ground. That's good ground. But you know as well as I do, you go out to New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, a lot of those dry, desert, arid places, and you plant a seed, you can come back in a few days, nothing. You can come back in a year, nothing. Right? Don't have the soil for it, don't have the water for it. And even if you got great soil, it's got to be watered. Doesn't it? It's got to be watered. It's got to get some sunlight. Sunlight. S-O-N. Like, got to get some sun. Like, what's sunlight? His presence. His presence. And water is more of the anointed word. His presence and his word. His spirit and his word will cause in good ground, it will cause a miracle yes. in the middle of you. Amen. Anybody getting stirred up about this besides me? Hold up your Bible. Look at all the seeds you got. Look at, look at all the seeds you got in here. Healing seed, wisdom seed, right? Prosperity, abundance seed. Deliverance, freedom seed, peace seed, joy seed. Is that right? You can, what kind of seed? It's all, whoo. <laughs> Glory to God. Where were we on Luke 8? No, we were past that. No, I'm scared. We, we weren't. This is the uh, Jesus explaining the parable. The seed is the word of God. He says it again. Come on, say it out loud. The seed, the seed is, is the word of God. That's why I'm calling it word seed. Word seed because our mind needs to get renewed. It's not just knowledge. It's miraculous seed. Verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear then comes the devil and takes away the word out of their hearts lest they should believe and be saved. Now last week we went into some detail about why this person and these kind of people didn't get any results. The scripture says it was trodden down. If you look at Matthew 13, Mark 4, and Luke 8 all talk about this same parable. 
It was trodden down. The word was shown no respect, was given no place, and so they never understood it. And the devil snatched it away from them before it ever got in them and produced anything. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. What's the fear of the Lord? It's reverence. It's respect. Around here we read our chapter every day. How many know when you're reading your chapter, don't let everything interrupt you. Right? Focus. Don't treat it like, oh, it's no big deal if I do. It is a big deal. Some things should be big deals. And this is. So these people, 25% of the people that heard it fall into this category. They couldn't be bothered to pursue the word of God. They had no respect for it. Didn't care if they heard it or not. Was trodden down by the wayside. Stolen from them. I want to know why these folks didn't get results. Because I'm not going to be that way. How about you? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. And I want to know how the good ground was good ground. Because I'm looking at some good ground. Amen. By faith I'm looking again. I'm looking at I'm looking at some of that good, rich, black, Samoan volcanic soil. <laughs> that if you don't want it to grow, you better not put it in there. <laughs> Somebody say, I'm good ground. I'm good ground. I'm good ground. You know, that's true whether you're sowing, whether you're sowing your friendship or you're sowing your time or you're sowing some money into somebody. You want to be good ground for what they're sowing into. Because all ground is obviously not the same. 75% of the ground produced no results. The seed was wasted on three quarters. That's a sobering truth. The seed was wasted. I don't want to waste my seed. Seed's precious. Keep reading. Those uh, on the rock. So here's where we are to today. We finally got to our place. <laughs> Those on the rock are they which when they hear the word receive the word with joy. So this is way out beyond wayside ground because they received it. It, act, it never got in the wayside ground people. But the word got in these people, and the way you can tell it is the joy. When the word get its, gets in you, never is it this mild, okay, great. Because uh, it's not just knowledge, it's living. It's quickening. It quickens you. And when it does, it's going to show up on your face. It's going to show up in your emotions. It's going to quicken you. So they received it with joy. And they have no root. Uh-oh, here's where it goes wrong. Everything was going good. And, but, but they have no root, which for a while, Believe. And in time of temptation, fall away. So 25% of the people who hear the word fall into this category. Heard the word, got excited about it, believed it, and received it, but quit. Gave up. Cast their confidence away and got no results. Listen to other Matthew's account of this. It says in the Weeks translation, He who was sown upon the shallow ground where the rock layers were near the surface. This is not just 
ground with big rocks on the top. This is ground that's very shallow soil and under the soil without going down very far at all is rock. Layers of rock like in Branson. <laughs> we got rock in Branson, but And so when the seed did get in the ground, it tried to put roots down, but it couldn't go down. It was a quick reception, but a shallow reception. Now, quick reception is not all bad, except for when it comes to the Word of God, this is a long-term commitment. And you've heard people, I've heard people say, I tried that. But it didn't work. Well, how long did you give it? <laughs> what is the acceptable limit where you can go, ah, that didn't work? I know the first car Phyllis and I tried to believe for back in the 70s. And our, our eye caught a Buick Riviera. We thought, yeah, that's the car for us. So we just learned about faith, maybe known about it a year, if that much. Maybe not that much. And we said, so we're going to agree together and claim leave for a car. So we did. But we, I heard somebody else do this, so I thought we'd do it. We said, we believe we receive it in 30 days. What are you laughing about? <laughs> And so we're expecting, 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 and got down to the 28th day, and really, really expecting, because it's got to happen soon, and 29th day, and 30th day. We went to work, and man, I, every phone call, I'm thinking, that could be it, you know. Checked the mailbox, and, and uh, after work, we came home, nothing had happened, but it's still, you know, the 30th day. And so uh, 9 o'clock, nothing, 10 o'clock. 11 o'clock, 12.01. Well, it's more than 30 days. Now, our feathers fail. You know what I mean by that? Now, thankfully, by the mercy of God, we didn't blame God. Had enough sense not to do that, thank the Lord. But we just figured, you know, something didn't work. So we just went to bed. And what was it? A couple of years after that, when we wound up at Ramah, I'm hearing some teaching on faith, excellent teaching. And I, but I thought after a number of months about that car deal, I thought, well, Lord, everything I'm hearing, it sounds like we were in faith. So I must still not know what faith is. Please help me with this. Because I thought we were in faith. Is everybody listening? Are you awake? I thought we were in faith. And the Spirit of God spoke to me. I was down on the floor praying. I don't mean I heard an audible voice, but he said, you were in faith. In fact, you were doing well for where you were. He said, but if you ask big, you got to be prepared to stand long. <laughs> Didn't say you'd have to every time, but you got to be prepared to. And he said, hey, he said, you were doing well until 1201. <laughs> he said, you let a little mechanism with springs and hands click a few times and decided my word wasn't true anymore. Uh, see, th there's a lot of people that have called themselves Believe in God, and the truth is, many of them were. They were in faith until they quit. But if you stand strong in faith for two years and then quit, you get the same results as if you hadn't believed God at all. 
You got to stand. And having done all to stand, stand. If it was true then, it's true now. It'll be true tomorrow. The word is eternal. It doesn't change. If it was true, it's true now. And if my faith is based on the word, the word doesn't change. So if my faith's on the word, it's not going to change. Beware of setting time limits, time frames for things. If the Lord told you it was going to happen, okay, you can believe that. But otherwise, you just believe you receive it now by faith and you expect until. Until. And through faith and patience, perseverance, you'll inherit the promises. So while I'm laying there on the floor, kicking myself, going, dummy, dummy, we could have used that car, man. Wouldn't that have been a boost to your faith? We were in faith. Oh, oh. And then the Lord said to me while I'm laying there, he said, it's not too late. I sat up, I thought, huh, huh, what? He said, it's not too late. He said, it's incorruptible word. What does that mean? It don't get old. It doesn't age. It doesn't decay. He said, go back and pick it up. He said, you remember how excited y'all were, how you were expecting? And he said, just go back and pick it up. This time, don't quit. So we did. I went home after work that day. I told Phyllis. We, I said, you remember that? Oh, yeah. And we, we talked about it. We got excited. I said, this time we're not quitting. So we didn't think about it every day, but when, when it did, we'd say, thank you, Lord, for our new car. We weren't just saying Buick this time because, you know, it's been years and we're just, we're just open, but, but a new car. And, and so months passed, and we might not say it every day, but when we think about it, thank you, Lord, for our car. Thank you, Lord, for our car. We're in faith. We're expecting, but we're giving God more than 30 days. And I guess what was it, a couple of years after that or so, two and a half years or so? Phyllis came in from work one day and she said, uh, Brother so and so told me we, uh, that the Lord put it on his heart to buy us a new car. We knew him well and he could do it. I said, Really? Yeah, what kind? Whatever kind we want. When? Now? I said, Get your purse. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, it was wintertime. And we went, we drove around to the different dealerships. Guess where we wound up? Buick. Buick dealership. Guess what was sitting on the showroom floor, brand new? New Riviera. We drove it off the showroom floor, crunching in the snow. Paid for. Tag and taxes paid for. But see, if we had stopped back there, you know, three or so years before, you could say, I tried that. It didn't work. No, honey. No, no. Look, put up, put up on the screen for Psalm 107. Psalm 107, verse 20. Here's what really happened. Psalm 107, 20. That's not it. 107, 20. It's talking about Joseph and how that he got that word that his brothers would bow down and his mom and dad and that, you know they, his brothers wanted to kill him for it and, and then after he got that vision things went from bad to worse right they sold him as a slave and, and he's years that way and then even God gave him prosperity as a slave but then Potiphar's wife lied on him he winds up in the dungeon right but the Bible said uh, that's not right either I told, I told you the wrong verse. Please stand by. Where's my verse? Thank you. Thank you. God gave me a good wife to help me. Huh? Craig. Thank you, Craig. Well, Craig helped my wife and my wife helped me. Is it 105.19, the word of the Lord tried him? Put it up, please, Psalm 105.19. Thank you all. I'll take, take that help. It said about Joseph, until the time that his word came, 
He tried it. No. The word tried him. When people say, I tried that, it didn't work. No, 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 no. It tried you. And you failed. You quit. It's not a seed problem. It's a ground problem. Not a seed issue. The seed is perfect. The seed is eternal. The seed is incorruptible. My, my, I wish I had some more time this morning. Uh, <laughs> whew. Back to Matthew 13, 21. This is New Living Translation. Real quickly, I'm finishing, I think. Why did they have no root? Why did they have no deepness of earth? And why did they, they give up so quick? New Living says in verse 21, since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The complete English says they don't last very long. As soon as life gets hard or the message gets them in trouble, they give up. The message says when the emotions wear off and some difficulty arrives, there's nothing to show for it. The scripture said that by and by they were offended because of persecution and affliction because of the word. Will you be persecuted for receiving the word? Yes, you will. Because of tribulation and persecution on account of the word. I don't think this has been taught enough. When you lay hold of God's word, when you embrace it and believe it and get excited about it and are receiving it, a lot of people are not going to be happy about that. You're going to be going upstream now compared to the negative death flow of the world. And what's... Part of what's so uh, troubling about it is a lot of it will come from your own family or your friends that you have that didn't get into the word with you. And so if you're easily discouraged, you're going to be stony ground. If you're easily offended, you're going to be stony ground. Because the enemy hates this word seed. Because he's afraid of what it can do. He can work on getting a yoke and a bondage in somebody's life that he developed on their great grandpa. And taught them to embrace it and taught the next one to embrace it. It can be something, some bondage and, t and stuff that's been ingrained in people for generations and the anointing can shatter it in milliseconds. Amen. Set you free from something nobody could set you free from. And just mess up decades of the devil's work. Are you all for that? And, the, and this word is what does it. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them, the scripture said. So that's why. Otherwise, the devil wouldn't care. If you heard some preaching and teaching, he wouldn't care if it didn't matter and it didn't affect him. Why? When an anointed word starts coming out, why does the devil assign teams to hurry and go try to get it and steal it? Why? Why? And if he's not able to catch it before it gets in somebody, why then does he assign uh, evil spirits to work so that there's 
persecution and there's affliction and to get you to what? To turn loose and to quit and give up. Why? Because if you won't give up, it's incorruptible. It will produce a miracle harvest. It will. It will. It will. If it's a delivering seed, it'll deliver you. If it's a healing seed, it'll heal you. If it's a prospering seed, it'll prosper you. But there's, there's a struggle over this. Spiritual struggle. The enemy will come. What's he trying to do? The two words are tribulation and persecution. Tribulation means pressure. The Greek word literally means pressure. Persecution means to drive away. The purpose of the persecution is to pressure you until he gets you separated from that word. Bring thoughts and feelings to this is not working. This is not working. It's been 30 days and nothing. This is crazy. This is not doing you any good. Until if he can get you offended. What does offended mean? Offended has to do with something that you trip over or stumble over. You ever been walking along? And there's a rise in the, the sidewalk or something and you hang your foot? You ever seen people, what they do? Hang, what do they do? Look around? How do they look at it? Not like it's a blessing. Is that right? Unsanctified people cuss right about that. But, but what are you doing? You, you look at it like it personally insulted you. Right? And personally in, injured you, was injurious and insulting to you. That's what this word offense means. Jesus preached messages. And then after he preached the message on drink my blood and eat my flesh, <laughs> they were offended. And he said, does this offend you? And they all left. This bother you? This upset you? In his own hometown, they were offended at him. Jesus told his disciples right before the cross, he said, all of you are going to be offended at me. Peter said, no way, no how. If everybody's offended, I won't be offended. The word's used multiple times. There. Where did we see it happen? When things didn't go the way they expected, he's outside from looking afar. And they said, aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? He said, uh-uh. No. It's like looking back at what you stumbled on and going, no, nah, uh-uh, no. And they kept asking, and eventually he began to curse and swear and say, no way, no, I don't know him. I know what you're talking about. That's when the word stops working in your life. When you join and agree with somebody making disparaging remarks about faith, about redemption, about the word, about church, about Jesus, about his people. Come on, are you with me? Yeah. When you lose the respect, that's when the reception is lost. That's when it comes out of you. And it's, nothing's going to be produced. There's not going to be any harvest now. You get mad. You get hurt. You get upset. You get offended over the situation. That's exactly what the devil wanted. Now he knows there will be no harvest. But I'm not looking at wayside ground. I'm not looking at stony ground. Oh, come on, this is not time for you to quit. I'm not looking at thorny ground. I'm a looking at 30, 60, 100 fold good ground that a, a, an anointed God word seed get anywhere close to you. Anywhere close to you, you go, woo. <laughs> you receive it. How do we know we received it? Joy. 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 Then what do we do? 
You keep it. Tomorrow you water it. You go over those verses again. Listen to that message again. Talk about it. Confess it. What do you do next day? Next day. Next week. You keep on watering it. You, 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 in the presence of the Lord. Thanking him for it. Letting the sunlight shine on you. Come on, is that right? And you water it some more. Let the sunlight shine on you. Water it some more. You won't be like that 75% that heard and got no results. You'll be like those that other people talk about. Did you hear what happened <laughs> to them? Well, that's a miracle. Yes. Uh, and some foolish people will say, yeah, you just never know what God's going to do. I tried to get him to heal me, and he wouldn't heal me. I don't know why he healed her. but Not as big a mystery as they think. <laughs> it's not a seed problem. It's a ground issue. But you can be, and you've already told me you've decided to be. Good ground. Stand on your feet, everybody. <laughs> Praise be to God.